Hey guys, Joe here, and back with another Let's Change the Shell videos. And this time we're working on a Game Boy Color. If you remember it, I got it in a bundle not too long ago. And the system does work, as you can see, hopefully, with the glare. Yeah. See, it's loading up Pokemon Red right there. But the system is in very tatty shape. As you can see, it's very chewed up there. The screen is all chipped up. It's missing the battery cover. What will we ever do about that? Well, my good friends, we are going to do this. Get a couple of uh, manila envelopes, say the magic words, and shaboingy! Yep, that's right, kids. What we have here is a replacement housing, as well as a replacement glass screen. This is one of the most important things to go with this system, in my opinion anyway. We know this system works, it's tested, so what we have to do is basically just get this shell put together. This one comes with a plastic shell, but I'm not going to use it. The other reason I'm not going to use it is because I don't want anybody to ever confuse this with an actual Pikachu Edition Game Boy Color. First thing you need to do is disassemble the system, so make sure you remove your batteries. And then one thing I did see in here is that it does have quite a bit of corrosion in there. We're going to clean that up. And of course, since it's on the shell for the most part, the parts that are in the shell we're not going to be using, so we're not too concerned about that. So grab your trusty tri-wing screwdriver. Now the kits do come with them, but they're not very good. So here we go. Once you remove those six screws, Flip the system over and see how many actually fall out. In this case, only two did. I am going to use this bottle cap to hold the screws. Oh, gross. When these systems came out, these see-through cases were all the thing, but I really don't care for them. I think it's stupid because what do you see there? You see one little PCB on this side and the speaker, which looks like crap because it's tiny. So, yeah. Now, while you're in here, is a good time to get in there and start cleaning stuff out. I don't know how you can see it, but there is literally dog hair in here. So I'm going to use some alcohol swabs and uh, try to clean the contacts a bit and get everything out that I need to. Hopefully this new case will have these new pieces in there because those are really bad. So before I go any further, I'm actually going to check. Opening the bag, opening the bag. What's inside the freaking freaking bag? Okay. Now, these things feel like they were painted but never cleared, so they don't actually feel that good. And there's another cheap plastic glass replacement. There's all your screws, your buttons, and your capacitive buttons that activate everything. So let's open this up. Score! It does have new contacts in there, so we don't have to get all kinds of uh, worried about that. So, let's continue working. We're going to disassemble the inside now, and you need a Phillips head screwdriver for that, which I conveniently have ready. So now you've removed the screws. There's only three on the base of this. They learned their lessons from the original Game Boy. Uh, it's still quite tight in there, probably due to the grime and buildup that was in there. So. But looking at the board, other than a little bit of water damage back here, it's not in terrible shape. It doesn't smell like it's been screwed with, so I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol swab and clean those contacts. I have a very large box of these that I got for free after one of my hospitalizations when I had to give myself warfarin injections, which sucked. And uh, yeah, here we go. Finally found a use for them after five years. Mmm, gunk. We love gunk. Now, will this affect the play of the system? As of right now, it hasn't, but I really don't want to take the chance. And since I'm in here, I might as well clean it up and make it work correctly anyway. And it takes seconds while you're in here, especially if you have alcohol or alcohol swabs already ready to go. Yeah, so clean all that out. You can always get in here through the back and clean out the contacts a bit. Make sure the board is clean and nice and clean. As you can see, it's held in. It's sticky in there. So you need to get in here. You can just use the tip of your screwdriver. Just be careful. 
I usually grab a flat tip screwdriver end, stick it in there. You can also use a knife if you want to, but you get in there and you just lever it out. It's not going to break it unless you're an idiot, like me sometimes. So go ahead and get that bad boy out of there. You can see how nasty the inside of this case was. So this case will never get used again, um, not even for parts. I don't need it for parts. It's really grody. So we'll just go ahead and bend that. However, I'm going to grab a couple of pieces off of here just in case I need them for the new case. First step in assembling the new case is to take the new case, lay it face down, and start putting in your buttons, which in this case came in a nice little baggie. Same kind you put a speedball in. One of the biggest things you'll notice when you buy an aftermarket or third-party shell is that they have their buttons possibly laid out differently in terms of how they have them key. It's kind of a key way if you were doing a uh, crankshaft positioning sensor. So you just have to make sure you pay attention to that when you're putting the system back together. Because if you try to use your original pieces, it may not actually work at all because the lineup might be completely different. I'm not really trying to see if that's the case here, but uh, it very well could be. It does have a new IR sensor cover, so I'm going to go ahead and use the new one. Yeah, it fits okay. All right, now you got to use your conductive pads. These are conductive pads. What they do, and if you look closely, you can see it. These are all separated. They have individual sides to each of the pieces here. When these pads come down, they actually close the connection because they're, they're conductive. And they can actually wear out over time. So you want to make sure that if you get new ones, you use the new ones. And then just like the buttons themselves, they should only go in one way. As you can see here, because they have different size holes. I've noticed a lot that the D-pad one is usually universal. You can put it in left, -wee, left way or right way. Left way, left way. Left way, right way, we are the V-E. All right. So we still haven't installed the screen, and we're not going to. Now's the time to make sure you have no dirt, dust, or detritus on your screen. Then you can go ahead and flip it over. And set it down. Because of the shape of the opening, it should, it should actually orient itself. If it doesn't, you'll know pretty quickly, and you can go ahead and adjust it a little bit so you just lift up on the board slide the screen around there we go that took more than it should have so we're gonna go in the reverse order using the Phillips head ones which would have been smart had I not mixed them all together but here we go one one tip is that the interior screws are typically shorter than the exterior screws and that is done on purpose because you're not going to need quite as long a screw. <laughs> quite as long a screw. As you did for the outside case because you're not going through quite as much plastic. So go ahead and secure your board back down. Another tip, it tends to help to have the board in your hand because the buttons underneath are pushing up against the board as you're pushing down. This is new plastic, so don't be alarmed if the screws are a little bit hesitant to go into their spot. If they are, they will go in. You just have to be patient and use a little bit of pressure not a lot because you don't want to crack the board when you get down to it but just enough to secure the board so it doesn't move make sure all your springs are clean everything's cleaned off and there you go so it's installed in there and theoretically it should work fine <sighs> get that hair out of there next step grab the back and don't forget to put in your power switch. Now, last time I did one of these, yeah, it's looking like the same thing here. Because they're either using old molds from the factory or something, they sometimes don't fit correctly. So you have to give them a little bit of work. But this one should be fine once we screw it down. And because these screws were so grody, I'm actually going to use the new screws that were included. Actually, I'm not because I want to keep the original feel of the system, and those are all Phillips head screws. So we have it partially reassembled. Something I should have did was test these buttons first, but next I'm going to pop in a couple of batteries, 
and make sure that the system itself is functioning again. Well, there's kind of proof. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, being that this is the number one problem with these systems, but it is, in fact, working! And there's Pokemon Red, start button worked, that button works. All right, next step is to put the battery cover on and the screen protector. Now is also the time to get any fingerprints you may have imparted onto the screen. There we go. Two things I want to show you. This is the glass screen that I am installing on this system. This is the way to go. Unlike this cheap ass plastic one from the same company, but I prefer a glass one. And this is, again, what I will do for all of my systems moving forward. Also, if you notice, it is a different style because I also want it more obvious that this is not the original screen. So I can't be accused of trying to sell a knockoff as an original. Once you set the glass in place, go ahead and use a uh, paper towel. Kind of push down all your edges and secure it in. Yeah, so pretty much there you go. Let me put the sticker on there. One thing I've noticed is that these stickers are getting a lot better. They have a lot more of the correct information, which is both good and bad. And there you go. You now have a fully reconditioned Game Boy Color. As you can see, it works. Yeah, there you go. Sound works, speakers work, everything works. It doesn't rattle anymore, and it looks a hell of a lot better than that. So to go from that to that, and this whole kit, including the glass screen, cost me $13. So... Yeah, what you've done is you've, number one, cleaned up your investment, and number two, if you decide to sell it on, be honest, but it's going to help you in the long run, because now I can bundle this with a couple of Pokemon games, and it looks cool. And it's a system you don't have to be afraid of damaging anymore, because obviously this one had years of abuse on it. I'm not saying that they should have treated it better, but they should have treated it better. But also, in a day or two, you're going to see me fix this one, so that is nothing in comparison. So yeah, if you like my series of fixing stuff, give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, leave them down below. If you'd like to subscribe, write about yay, maybe there, I don't know. I'm not really looking very well to see where I'm pointing, but somewhere down here, you're gonna find the subscribe button. Hit that for me, because I've gotten about 25 subscribers this month. I'd love to get 25 this next month. And it's a longer month, so it should be doable. So if you'd like to come along, see me do a bunch of weird stuff, click on that subscribe tab. And until next time, I'll see you later.